Thank you for joining us for today's message. Our hope is that it fills you with hope and encouragement and draws you closer to Jesus. But don't stop there. Download our app today and stay connected throughout the week. And finally, if you would like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do that at morelifechurch.com slash give. Now enjoy today's message. Today, I want to take us on a journey from going from overwhelming to overflowing. From overwhelming to overflowing. As I've watched relational challenges, I've seen people become so overwhelmed with the weight of the world and life that they can't move forward and it costs them everything. It costs way too much. <laughs> if you just pause and think about parenting. Uh, parenting can be very overwhelming at times, especially from the age of like, I don't know, like for me, it's the ages for us, and for me, it was the ages of two to six. When the kids were between two and six, that was the most important parenting work that we did. It was constant. It was an attempt by that child's psyche to wear us down to a nub with their energy and just keep on going. Like, like just the idea of corralling kids, uh, toddlers, in a public space gives me anxiety. So for all of you who ventured into church today with toddlers, I applaud you. I honor you. I praise you. I thank you for doing the dangerous work of bringing your children in public. <laughs> Like, I remember what, I, I know what that was like, taking your kids shopping. Oh my gosh, talk about overwhelmed. The, uh, uh, the aforementioned son <laughs> went to the grocery store with Ange, and Ange called me at work, and she reminded me that he was, in fact, my son <laughs> by saying, Josh, your son misbehaved at the Walmart today. And I said, what did he do? And she said, we were walking around, and he wanted an item, and I said, No. And he commenced to throwing himself in the middle of the floor in the freezer section and spun around on his back, screaming at the top of his lungs like a top and trying to embarrass me into giving him something. I personally think a devil manifested in his body in aisle seven at the Walmart. He just started freaking out, right? Like that's overwhelming, isn't it? Like keeping up with clothes for kids that they're, as they're outgrowing them, mealtime, spending 16 hours to make a meal that takes 18 minutes to eat. Finding activities that are suitable for them. Finding friends. Kids are unpredictable. They, 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 are enrap they enrapture you in embarrassing behavior. They, they want to be stuck on a schedule and you, they throw tantrums and it's just overwhelming. <laughs> the same kid. I decided I was going to break him of embarrassing me in public. The only way I knew to do it was to return the favor. <laughs> and so we went to the store and he asked for something and I said no and he started having a fit. And so I just lifted my voice louder than his and said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I've failed as a parent. This is in fact my child. He's going crazy. It isn't your fault. I know it's embarrassing and awkward, but I just want you to know it'll never happen again because we're going to go home and we're going to deal with it in private. He may not come out of the house ever again, but in fact it will be dealt with. He never did it again. <laughs> Isn't it great? I, what am I saying to you? That when you're overwhelmed, you have to acknowledge that you are overwhelmed. It, whether it's in your finances or your relationships or in, your, in whatever it is. Overwhelmed means to be buried or to drown beneath a huge mass. To be defeated completely. Doesn't that sound terrible? Does that sound terrible to anyone? Just, uh, just the idea. Maybe no one else has done this before. And again, I'm going to let you into a window of my soul. But I, I think of all of the ways in which I could leave this earth. And drowning is like at the top of my list of not wanting to go out that way. And being buried alive. Uh, it just gives me anxiety. But the truth is, many of us are being buried alive with stress and the cares of the world around us, the worries of money, the worries of, of relationships, the worries of our jobs, the worries of the things in the world around us. Money stresses, arguments about money, keeping bills down, paying bills. 
We're overwhelmed by these things. And it translates into our relationships. Um, I've identified three things in my life that I want to pass on to you that, that um, are how I respond when I'm overwhelmed or, or the component parts of being overwhelmed. Just for the sake of helping you identify it so you know that it's happening and then um, see what God says is a solution. Uh, being overwhelmed means this to me. It means emotional exhaustion. Emotional exhaustion it's caring too much for too long for people who don't care. We've all probably done that. We've cared too long, too much, for someone who is not putting as much energy into it as we are. That's exhausting. How can you exhaust an emotion? You can exhaust an emotion by living in it longer than its lifespan. Every emotion has... A time in which it's appropriate for it to serve its purpose and run its course in your life. In other words, you should not live in a perpetual state of any single emotion. You aren't wired to carry emotions long term, positive ones or negative ones. When joy is sustained, it causes emotional exhaustion. When sorrow is sustained, it creates emotional exhaustion. And when you're kind of working things up to try to work on relationships, if you're stuck in the, in the state of overwhelmed too long, it certainly, it certainly will cause you to be exhausted. So how do you look at it? I want you to imagine um, an emotion as a vehicle, grab a car in your mind, favorite vehicle that you get to take a trip on, and during the trip you have to pass through a tunnel. Imagine you're the driver of the vehicle, uh, and the vehicle itself is that emotion. Eventually, the goal in traveling is to get through the tunnel, to get on the other side. I'm imagining being in a vehicle, going through the tunnel on I-77 South, and the, on the West Virginia Turnpike, and there, is a, there are two tunnels there, and I've often thought, my God, don't let me get stuck in the middle of this tunnel. Let there not be a traffic jam in the middle of this tunnel. I want to get through the tunnel. I don't want to be subjected to a traffic jam in the tunnel. Overwhelmed is an emotional traffic jam where you get stuck in one expression for too long. And it wears you down. It wears you down. The next one, the next one that I want to identify is a dis dis decreased sense of accomplishment. When I'm overwhelmed, I second guess anything and everything that I've ever done and act as if it doesn't matter. I diminish it. I decrease it. And I, I'm, I basically arrive at a place that says, what's the point of this? Nobody appreciates it. Why do it? I, I would imagine that there are individuals in here that um, if it's your assignment, to make sure the kitchen is cleaned up. I, I bet that you've felt at many times this feeling of, what's the point of cleaning this up because it's just going to be a disaster in the morning? What's the point of doing this or doing that? It is a sense of overwhelm that what I do doesn't matter. The, the, the last one of overwhelmed is what I'll call depersonalization. It is the depletion of empathy. When we're overwhelmed, we stop caring about others. Let me give you an example that everyone in this room has experienced. If you've ever been sick, really, really sick, you know this feeling. I was sick back in October. I did not care about my phone. I did not care about the television. I did not care about email. I did not care about anything. I did not care about you. I did not care about my kids. I did not care about my wife. All I cared about was getting better was overwhelmed. That's a physical sickness. Some of us have an emotional sickness called overwhelm that's bleeding over into our relationships. And we don't know why, but we just don't care. We don't carry the empathy and the love and the concern. And I'm submitting to you that the answer is 
we're overwhelmed. How do we get through it? What does the Word say on getting past it? Psalm 61.2 says this, From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The psalmist, I think, is singing it. Saying, when my heart is overwhelmed, I'm not going to ignore it. I'm not going to dismiss it. I'm not going to move past it. I'm going to acknowledge my heart right now is overwhelmed. I'm not too big of a person to admit that I'm, that I'm overwhelmed. Like, it, it will destroy the pride in your life to say, I'm overwhelmed. Telling that person that's in relationship with you, I'm acting this way because I think I'm overwhelmed. I, I, I'll tell you this. Um, in November, I brought some emotional concerns that I had to our board. And um, I, I didn't intend on telling you this. Uh, I didn't tell the first service, so you're, I guess you're getting something that they didn't get. Um, and you watching online, hello, <laughs> uh, you get this too. Um, I took to our board uh, this idea, and I just told them, I said, I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. I'm exhausted. I think I'm burnt out. I'm, I'm just, I'm, 2020, it got me. Tired. You know, it's interesting. The moment I verbalized it, the moment I vocalized it, it, whatever it was, loosened its grip on me. Because what did I do? Unknowingly, I began to cry out to God, my heart is overwhelmed. I'm going to the people in my life who've got my back. I'm going to the rock. I'm going to the source that's higher than myself. And so I just began to share that with them, and they gave me steps, and we got into 21 days of prayer. And all of a sudden, these things that had overwhelmed me loosened their grip on me to the point where I don't even feel like I am the same person at all. I feel like God has turned me into another man, and I think it's a good, good thing. Um, thank you. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Um, wh wh why, why am I saying that? Because let me be that living testament that there is a way out. It doesn't have to grab hold of you and stay hold of you. Like, like let, let me just tell you, I was, I, was over, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed and worried and buried beneath the weight. I'm just going to talk real plain to you. We got a couple minutes, I'm going to talk real plain to you. I was worried at one point, are we going to bounce back from this, God? Are we as a church going to bounce back? Are we going to be okay? Are we going to keep on existing? Are we, have you changed everything? Has everything changed? Are we done? Attendance isn't where it's supposed to be or where I thought it could be. This number isn't where it should be. This, this, this. And my mind was all wrapped up in these numbers. And then 21 days of prayer hit. And as God is my witness, I cannot even be worried about this church. I've tried. I'm telling you, I've looked for it. I've looked for it and I cannot find it. I've looked and thought, where is the worry? Where is the overwhelmed nature? Where is it? And I literally, I've been like, look, like, like looking through the cupboards and cabinets of my soul, and I cannot, like, I may spend an extended period of time, ladies and gentlemen, looking for this thing and I can't find it. I'm like, I've lost it. I've lost it. Like, it's gone. So, 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 what am I saying? That thing that you've obsessed about and been overwhelmed by and obsessing with, the thing that has buried you, the answer is, when your heart is overwhelmed, go to the one that has the answers. Revert upward. Take it here and watch him Deal with it. Your worry and your stress and your over-concern and your obsessing and your managing of that issue is not going to change it. It is something that only God can do in our life, but we have to let Him. Going from overwhelmed to overflow. Overflow is a wonderful definition. It's the excess or surplus 
not able to be accommodated by an available space. This means that God's life, an idea for your life, the substance of life that He has for you and your relationships, exceeds your capacity to hold it and Him. In other words, there's more of Him than there is of you, and He understands it. He by nature is an excess or surplus, and you will not be able to accommodate all that He has in the finite space that is your heart. And since He is too much and overflowing, He wants to fill you to the point of overflow so that the residue of that overflow can drip down off of the rails of your life to the people around you. See, listen, if you're stuck trying to live in the deficit and always trying to fill yourself up. There's no extra for others. And God says, there's a higher place for you. It's a place called overflow. Look at this verse, and I'm going to close with this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. One verse says, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me Beside the still waters, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, what do they do? They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. This is God's plan for our life. That our cup runs over. That there's overflow. That there is excess and surplus beyond what you are able to accommodate. I don't know if you understand yet what I'm trying to say. So God, help me say this in a way that we get it in our hearts and in our souls and we see it. When I was a little kid, I, uh, there was a moment where I wanted a refill of a beverage. And I went to my grandfather and asked him to fill my cup. And I went to him and he started, pouring, he started pouring the cup. Well, as the cup began to get full, he looked away. And as he looked away, I took the cup and walked away. And he kept on pouring. And that beverage got all over the floor and all over the place. And he said, Josh, why didn't, why didn't you tell me to stop pouring? And, he, I, and I thought to myself, well, the cup was full, so I was done. I just walked away. There was another example that I want you to hold in your mind. Years ago, Jacob was a little kid. And I was downstairs, and I think I was playing video games. I mean, that was probably 20 years ago. And no, it couldn't have been that long. It was at least 18 years ago. He was probably three, four, five, six, something like that. And uh, I don't remember. He might remember, but I don't remember. Do you remember, buddy? Oh, you're eight or nine. Okay, even better. So he was still listening in almost as a teenager. So eight or nine, and I said, go get me, and I think it was milk, no? I asked for milk and chips ahoy. I was doing something. I was downstairs. I couldn't be bothered to go get it. That's what I made him for. Come on now. So he went and he got it. And uh, he came downstairs. And he had that cup so full. It had surface tension on it. And I looked at him. And he looked at me. And I started laughing. And he started laughing. And, the, and he started to jiggle the glass. And the glass was was tilting and jumping and bopping, and it was like going all over. It was like staying in the cup, and then he, I started laughing even harder because I saw him struggling with the milk and the cookies, and so he started laughing even harder, and the next thing I know, he's shaking that thing all over the place, and the cup is just toppling over with the milk just going everywhere, and we lost it. We loved it. It was great. We talk about it to this day so many years later. That's the power of a cup that overflows. It get to stay in the cup. It got on his hands. It got on his clothes. It got on our carpet. It went everywhere. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. God does not want you burdened down, buried, and beneath the weight of a mass. He wants you overflowing and full of joy. He knows the cup is full, but it's his, it's his honor. It's his joy. He takes pleasure in filling the cup to the point where it overflows. Any area of your life, He wants your life and my life to overflow. That's what He wants. 
surely goodness the, the psalm ends, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Romans fifteen thirteen. may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may say the red word with me, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are three words that I want to leave you with that are going to change your life, and they are the three words, up until now. Up until now, you've experienced struggle. Up until now, that thing has been a challenge. Up until now, you've been shackled with the weight of your past. Up until now, you've made a contract with the challenge. Up until now, the business has just been half, half a nostril above water. Up until now, the marriage has been on the brink of a divorce. Uh, up until now, your body has been riddled with stress and anxiety and overwhelmed. Up until now, all this stuff has been going on in your life. But now, today, it changes in Jesus' name. Today, everything changes for you as a Christ follower. It may have been that way up until now, but now is the moment where we say, I will no longer be shattered by my past. I will no longer be defined by things that God didn't put in my life. I will no longer be worried and full of fear over the stuff of yesterday. Yesterday's gone. Today has come. It's a new morning. There's mercy for me right here, right now. Like, let's go forward now. Up until now. I want you to hold up in your mind and think of what your up until now is. What's been that thing up until now? Everybody in the room, think about it. Up until now, you've been concerned you're going to be single all the days of your life. Up until now, you've been concerned you're not going to be able to have that baby. Up until now, you, you've, been, you've been worried over what your spouse is, is doing when you're not watching. Up until now, you've been worried about what's going to happen in that class. Up until now, you've been worried about, you fill it in. I can't think of all of it. Up until now, what has been overwhelming you? And today is the day that we cancel your contract with struggle. You were not created for struggle. You were not created for struggle. Struggle is a part of life. Don't misunderstand me. Challenge is a part of the deal. But you are not created to be in a perpetual state of struggle. It's not how God designed us. He designed us to be in relationship with Him. To have joy. To have life. To have peace. That even in the difficult, even, even in the valley of the shadow of death, the death doesn't, I may be walking through death, but death doesn't walk in me. It doesn't get in me. I'm just going through it. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me, the New Living says, by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Man, I want you, church, to get this in your heart and your soul and in your belief system. This is how your God sees you. This is how your God sees you. This is how your God sees you. He doesn't see a disappointment. He doesn't see you as a letdown. He doesn't see you as not good enough. He sees you like He sees His own Son. And He's ready, willing, and able to anoint you and cause you to overflow with blessings. That is what God sees when He sees you. I think about, I, I didn't even mean to do this. But the beginning of the year, we started this verse, and it, it kind of comes full circle. I've been asking you to put it in a prominent place. And Psalm 65, 11 says this, You crown the year with a bountiful harvest, and even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. My plan, guys, and your plan, is not a substitute for what the Holy Spirit can do through a surrendered heart. This has been my punctuation that I believe God wants to burn inside of each and every mind and heart and soul. How do I get to that place and get out of overwhelmed and into overflow where there's surplus and extra? Have a surrendered heart. Have a heart that's surrendered. 
that just says, God, I trust you with this part of me. I trust you with this part of me. Thanks again for joining us for today's message. Now take a second and subscribe to our channel, or you can share this message with someone that you think could use it. And finally, if you would like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do that at morelifechurch.com give. Now have a blessed day.